What's going on, guys? Of course, it's Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is that new comic book day video. We're talking about that Bolo show. We're going to review all the great books that came out this week. We're talking about those first appearances. We're talking about the reader buzz, variant buzz, and then, of course, Jack has a long-term play at the end. Not going to miss out on that, so make sure you stay tuned for it. But to be honest, it wasn't a very busy week, was it, Jack? No, no, real, real light week. Um, not a lot of releases. Again, still getting back into the swing of it, but a couple nice ones, few things to focus on. And you know comic buyers, even in these light weeks, they're always going to find little nuggets and things to pay attention to. Yeah, I, light week, but still some great stories out there. I was able to read a couple books. We do record this new comic book day evening, and then, of course, it goes up Thursday night on the channel. Also available on the audio podcast, if you just want to listen to the audio version, Supplements Comics podcast wherever those podcasts are found we're talking itunes stitcher google play pretty much everywhere soundcloud spotify but with that being said we're gonna get into this week's list starting with those first appearances then the first book we're talking about on the first appearance list this week is that nightwing annual number three with the first appearance of the condors yeah you know this is a team appearance and i've often talked on the channel if you're new here and shout out to all of our new subscribers. We appreciate all the channel growth we've seen uh, throughout the spring and early summer. But um, I'm not big on team appearances. I, I, quite often, it seems to be a trope that is done to kind of group up different characters. Having said that, I, I think that this is a, a, a team. Nightwing is a character where I think they've always, often needed to build out the world around him. If they want to elevate him from sidekick to kind of being his own hero, so I will say this one is one that I look at and I, I think has more possibilities than some other ones. But on the whole, team first appearances don't get me excited. I have to wait and see whether they're going to be really long-term part of the publishing plans. Right, This is one I did pick up. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I have gotten back into the Nightwing swing. I was reading it, especially with a lot of the rebirth kind of fell off of it, but that Joker Wars picked me back up into it. But either way, Nightwing Annual with that first Prince of the Condors. The next one we're talking about is the Metal Men number seven, which we get the first appearance of Metal Animals. Yeah, you know, this one is really the one where I say, like, on a slow week, people will pay attention to anything because this has actually gotten a lot of, like, speculator reseller attention. It sold out multiple times on Midtown, meaning that Midtown sold out of copies. Um, they either went and grabbed copies they had allocated for the in-store or – um, somewhere else, or like, I don't know, maybe being a distributor for DC Comics. Um, and suddenly more copies were listed on the site. And uh, then those sold out. So, you know, that indicates a lot of demand. I don't think this is any sort of long-term spec. I don't know who's really paying attention to this Metal Man run. But, you know, the Jim Lee-ness of this series has kind of kept people interested. The cover of this book I really liked, really reminiscent to me of 90s Image. Yeah, it's a great book. I would almost say if it wasn't for what you said, his first appearance would be normally maybe in the reader buzz section or who knows if it even make the list at all. But let us know in the comments, is this a book you guys picked up? Is this a book you've been reading? And let, what do you think about the series? But the last one we're talking about in the first appearance section is Dark Knight's Death Metal number one. And we get that awesome Batman T-Rex who's working on throwing that batarang with those short arms. <laughs> right, and that, that kind of comical um, element to such a kind of serious and dark story um, is, is funny. And, and this, this book has a lot, of, uh, a lot of buzz on it, clearly. We're talking, this is probably the big book of the week. Um, it's not my long-term play, although I did give it some consideration. Um, I, the, the negatives, obviously, the high print run, the large number of store retailer exclusives. But we saw the same thing from Dark Knight's Metal at the first volume. So, And that entire series really has um, escalated in value and really become a, a, a mini series to kind of keep an eye out for long-term. Um, it may just be featured on a top 10 list coming soon. But it's, it, that's one of those things where, um, you know, I, I think you can project this one as well. I think a lot of people were anticipating Robin King. We didn't get it. Um, but this that very much reminds me of Batman Who Laughs. And I think we're, we may see the similar kind of heat. So pay attention to not just the, the issues in this series, but those crossover uh, issues if there's, if, when they run crossovers into um, the main continuity. But, you know... I think this is one 
one where also you got to talk about the variants because you know we mentioned the retailer exclusive variants but there was also you know that art germ variant and matina variant awesome open order variants available you know right on the shelf so let us know in the comment section what variants for this book were you picking up yeah and this was also in the reader buzz section and great opening salvo to the story right if you want to say that but um we often talk on this channel about world building. We, we normally relate to Jeff Johns with a lot of that, but Scott Snyder, no doubt, has been known for that great run with the Batman and New 52. Great run. I've liked his Justice League, and that kind of carries over into the Dark Knight's metal, or Dark Knight's death metal, all the series, regardless of what you say. I always get... I'm a kind of a lazy reader, so I hate when comics are like really wordy at times, but this is one that had me captured throughout the story the whole time and we get a little wonder woman bruce campbell ash there from from evil dead with uh this the chainsaw of truth right <laughs> so i don't know is make it sound like batman who left might be dealt with but we'll have to see but those are the first appearances for this week and we're going to move right over into the reader buzz <laughs> So there's a couple of books on the reader buzz list, but for the purposes of this show, we try to talk about the book just once rather than being redundant and keep going over the same books. So really for this show purposes, we have one book we're going to talk about the reader buzz, and that's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five. This was the last one in this miniseries, right? Right. This series has been a hit for Turtle fans, a hit for Power Ranger fans, and caught a lot of people who doubted this crossover uh, off guard because this book issues one through five have been able to land in the reader buzz section. The interior art is something that I continue to talk about. It's one of the, the most fantastic, I think, color selections. Um, shout out to the interior artist, shout out to the colorist. It, it's really incredibly well done. Um, it just, the entire series and the variants. We've talked about the, these, these Goni Montez helmet variants, the one per store variants. Um, the, you know, the individual ones with each issue for each, each turtle with each helmet, uh, just incredible variant program put together all in all. And this series was a smash success. It leaves me sitting here saying, and we, we have no knowledge of anything coming down in the future, but man, I hope they do another volume, Brian. I hope, um, even if it's on IDW, like they've done before where they do like a home and home. So, you know, this one was called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Maybe IDW does it. It's Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers, but fantastic series, excellent reader buzz. And in this issue, we even get kind of a first appearance featured on the cover of cover A. Um, you get that turtle zo zord, uh, you know, kind of in full force. So we got a lot of cool kind of combination stuff, cool variants. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a series that's going to be collected for a long time. Yeah, I enjoyed this series and I definitely enjoyed this last issue. And it goes right to what you were saying about the interior art, the colors that were selected. And it kind of feels like that animated series to you. And we've talked about on this channel time and time again. I wasn't a big fan of the show Power Rangers, but we've talked about how much greater these comics are, especially with the Boom series. And this one kind of ties all that together. You just feel like almost a kid again, but the story in it's way above that you get entertained as an adult yes. or that, that mid-teen. I mean, it kind of ties to every audience, every demographic. And then the way it ends, without spoiling it, you kind of think there's going to be a follow up to it or they you leave gotta it open. Feel, you got to feel that it's, you got to feel that there is, you really got to feel that there is. And, and it also, we talked about this, man, Nickelodeon, Netflix, do the right thing. Let's get, let's get this animated feature made. Yeah. But this is one I've picked up in floppies, but I'll go back and pick it up in trade as well, just because the story's that good. That's the only book we had to discuss in the video about the reader buzz, but there's one that wasn't on the list that I actually talked about in the last call show, the FOC show that we normally do. And we talked about it. It was that image book, A Man Among Ye, number one, that book about Anne Bonnie, fantastic female pirate. We talked about it on the last call when I was talking about, if you were a fan of Black Sails, this is why I wanted to pick this book. And it feels like Black Sails to me. It's not as violent, but it picks up right there and it tells you how ruthless Anne Bonnie was. And since we're talking about Reader Buzz, if you want a good story, I'm just saying the story is great. Definitely pick up issue number one on that. And that variant for it, I'm going to butcher his name, of course, but Stefan Sychik always does great covers, and he's got that cover B for this. Yeah, he just, uh, just left DC Comics and went home to Top Cow permanently. 
So with that being said, that's gonna wrap up the reader buzz and we're gonna go right over into that variant buzz list. And that book we're gonna talk about in the variant buzz section this week is, we've talked about these before, and it's definitely on here this week. We get that G.I. Joe 272, that one in 10 John Royal variant. A lot of people are like G.I. Joe, but this is sold out a lot of places online. It's hard to find. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I'm a big G.I. Joe fan, right? And I've, I tend to can predict when these books are gonna get popular. This one caught me off guard because this cover, I like the fire element of it, but there wasn't anything about it that made me necessarily say, um, this one is a winner. And it's going for about 15 plus shipping, which is, is over ratio, but I, I think is more inflated as people are trying to make a profit. Um, I think people, this is what happens is last week's book or last month's book was such a success, um, 271. And I think they tried to duplicate that, but I don't think people understood why 271 was a success. And it was really the female on the cover with the crop top, John Royal's art style being so similar to J. Scott Campbell, which, you know, really plays well with kind of a pinup style female. And there's not a lot of that kind of covers in GI Joe outside of the retailer store exclusives. So I really think that's why that cover was popular, but this is a move that resellers- Especially if it doesn't have barrenness on the cover. Right. And this is one of those things where resellers and speculators, we've seen this move before, right? Well, um, we've talked about it with like publishers where they've done, people have done this with, uh, you know, just various trends. Uh, artists is a big one where you have success with one and then you just kind of attribute that you'll be able to have that success going forward. And it just doesn't work that way. John Royal's a great artist and I really like this cover, but these types of covers don't move with GI Joe. It's either a female cover or it's a snake eyes cover. Those are the types of covers that I really kind of pay attention to and look for. That's a great case, but I also think these covers, they might not on new comic book day or the initial month of release, but if you go back and try to find probably any of these one in tens for this yeah. G.I. Joe series, no matter who that artist is, they always dry up and are harder to find, John Royal especially. So I think take what you said out of the equation, you do have, just like you are, those G.I. Joe yep. collection. We talk about selling books and sets. There's people out there building those sets, especially just for the one in 10, regardless of what it is. And that's why these books tend to do well later on, if not right now. But right now, we're seeing a lot of them sold out. And I think it's exactly for the reason that you pointed out. Absolutely. But like we said, it's a short week. So that's what we have for the variant buzz. But we're going to get into right now, Jack's long-term play. This is a book I'm sure everyone had on their list. This is a book that a lot of people were aware about. We know we talk about Boom a lot on this channel. And we're talking about wind number one. I think a lot of people were picking this up specifically for that incentive variant. But great story. Tell us why it's your long-term play. Yeah, so my excitement over this series truly has nothing to do with the Peach Momoko variant. Now, we can't talk about this book without talking about it. The Momoko variant. The Momoko variant certainly drove sales. This book um, solicited at the last second, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, and coming at a time when the stores are just starting to reopen, this is a time when you would not expect uh, pre orders to be very strong for a book. But it, Bleeding Cools reported that the pre orders for this book were exceptional retailers were very much on board because they've seen great returns from these boom number ones, especially when you start talking about the writers associated. Um, James Tinian, there is no hotter writer. Something's killing the children is as hot as it gets. We got news just today that he's talking to some Hollywood executives about scripting and it's believed to be Netflix. And that lends a lot of people to think about possibly something's killing the children or is it a uh, backstagers? Right, are we talking the woods or where where are we talking with James Tinian? But um he's as hot as they get right now. Uh, so having this series come out right now is great for retail shops. And then having the hottest artist that exists on the planet doing a one in twenty-five incentive certainly induced orders. Um and we saw pre-sales of the Moco going more than double ratio for the past several months. Now, those prices have cooled expectedly as as Copies have come into retail stores, uh, and now the supply available online has gone up considerably. But we also saw, I think that 
variant hurt a bit by retail exclusives who, you know, somebody did one where they took the same book and put the trade dress. Another person did a sketch. And, you know, sometimes we've seen when that happens, it can add to a book. Sometimes it can take away. Um, and I think just with the supply right now in the short term, we're seeing some prices kind of level for that. But that's not even, for me, the reason to be excited about this series. The big thing is kind of the genesis and origin of this. This was not supposed to be a monthly comic book. Um, this book was part of the Kaboom imprint, which is more of the all ages uh, driven um, reader uh, series. It's not any, and we don't talk about Kaboom books ever really on, you know, on any sort of secondary market program. We're not talking about them on YouTube. We're not talking about them on Supplements Comics because most of them really just don't hit anything on the secondary market. But this is supposed to be like a three graphic novel series. Um, so you're talking about a lot of, a, a lot of work, right? And then this was a big project that James Tinian was doing with Boom set to come out in November. And with the, everything that happened in the comic industry, Boom Studios, CEO Ross Ritchie, as well as James Tinian, they wanted to do something to reinvigorate the comic market. And the whole idea was, well, we've got, you know, several issues worth of this book because we've got these trades. Let's get these in the hands of retailers. They moved it up to June. This comic is double size, 40 pages per issue. And that's not just the first issue like a lot of series do. Every issue, 40 pages. The average comic book being 20 pages. And they didn't up the price like a lot of, you know, publishers do where if, well, I'm going to give you twice the, the comic, I'm going to charge you twice the price that you didn't see that this book is all about, again, reinvigorating the comic market. So you're going to see on cover a and like cover B and the Dan Mora variant, you're going to see, you know, slow, it's, it's going to be low and the, the book will be available for cover price. Again, it's part of the boom guarantee program, which means it's returnable for stores that opt into the boom guarantee. Um, so It'll be a slow mover, but this isn't the short-term play of the week, right? This is the long-term play. And so we're looking at this one long-term. We know about the first look deal with Netflix. We know about the fact that Netflix really loves all ages product. We know that, again, that fantasy stuff is hot right now. And this story really lends itself. This is one that, like, when I sat down with my daughter and looked at the digital for issue number one, she loved it. And I, I knew that this one, this is going to be a hit. And this was, there was so much buzz on this graphic novel from a, a um, kind of industry perspective that it coming into now being a monthly series, I don't really care that it's an all ages title. That to me, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's a larger audience. Um, and I think that Boom is going to do this right. I think variants and little marketing tools like that will keep the series in the eyes of collectors. But I think the reader buzz will be there throughout this series because of James Tenyon. So this is a book I'm paying attention to long-term. Um, I'm very bullish on these, these uh, new boom series, especially when you're coming with writers like, you know, James Tenyon, they've got series coming from Al Ewing and Tom Taylor. So we're bringing A-list writers. But another thing that I got to mention, Brian, Simplemanscomics.com, we broke a little bit of news this week about this series that there are two previews for Wind Number One um, currently out right now uh, in Boom Books this month, but only one has hit shelves so far. Something's Killing the Children Number Seven hit shelves last week. It has a preview in the back, multi page preview of Wind Number One. Uh, and then once in future number eight, we'll also have the preview, but that book doesn't come out till next week. So essentially you end up having a preview first appearance in something's killing the children seven. That book has become a ghost cover. A is about 10 to $12 now. Um, and the, uh, cover B one in 20 Emma Rios variant is over $50 now. So there's a lot of demand on that book. Um, a lot of it has to do with the reader buzz of Something's Killing the Children, but now some of it has to do with the fact that like, Bleeding Cool picked up our article and put it out and put it all over their social. And um, now people are starting to realize, you know, if I, if I believe in wind, I should also probably be looking at Something's Killing the Children number seven. So that's another thing to be on the lookout for that we want to let everybody in the Simplements Comics family know about. But I would love to know if you guys read wind, what did you think? Um, is this one that you were paying attention to or did anything that I say maybe sway you and maybe now you want to check it out? 
So earlier when we were talking about the Power Ranger Ninja Turtle book, we talked about the interior art and how well it lends itself to the story. I think this does the exact same thing within it. And you talk about how hot fantasy is. I think this also has a, a plot line that's kind of current to the times right now where yeah. someone is different and there's a little bit of prejudice going out there where they don't even know the person, but there's laws in place. To, and they call in the Pied Piper pretty much to get rid of these people. And they're telling, hey, <laughs> cover your ears, man. Don't let people see your ears. But Peach Momoko is great. But reading this first issue, if for me, besides cover A, I would either pick up that Dan Mora or pick up that thank you very Hey, they call them the badass man. Well, um, what they call them the bandaged man or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I like to see how that plays out. And that preview that you're talking about, it does it plays out at the beginning of the story so it's not really it doesn't give away parts of the book then the storyline kicks in fantasy great story uh great character building all within that first issue so i definitely enjoyed win number one yeah that one per store thank you variant i think it's very undervalued right now it's selling for about 18 dollars um you know less than half of what the momoko is currently going for and we've talked about that before that that trend is kind of typical where the one per stores will go for a little less than a 125 if the 125 is popular because t typically there's less of the 125 but i think in this case there's probably far less of the one per store as a lot of stores ordered a lot of copies of this book being that it's fully guaranteed and they could return it and the momoko variant was sure to make them profit if you're able to make fifty dollars on the momoko variant then all of your books that you ordered uh to qualify for that become free so i i think that that one per store dan mora sketch is one to be on the lookout for if you can grab that thing under 20 dollars, if you believe in this property long term i think that's the book yeah so another great long-term play also let us know in the comments did you guys read win number one what did you think about it or were you able to pick up the peach momoko there's a lot of store exclusives out there as well but either way jack long-term play for the week and that is also going to wrap up the Bolo show, the Bolo list for this week, like we said, it's kind of a short week, but I think there were some great books on there. I've read quite a few this week that I enjoyed a lot of them. I think we're starting to gain some momentum. We're starting to see, especially with, if you watch the last call show, the final order cutoff show we do each week, those are starting to add more picks in there as well. So the comics are starting to churn and we're going to be hitting shelves here soon. So we'll be back to that full Bolo list, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was looking at this week's FOC list, and it's full of hits from all of the publishers. So I think we're about to be back on board in about a month. Yeah, and we're starting to get the later printings back in the FOC. Yes. So that would be good to see. And that, if you're interested in that, that airs every Friday night on Simplemans Comics YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed and click that bell so you get notified of not just that video, but all the top tens, all the three up, three downs. And we're planning some more content for the channel as we speak. So make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell. With that being said, guys, this is Brian and Jack with some men's comics, and we'll see you guys in the next video.